purpose this morning, my brothers and sisters, is not to propose these as examples, as viable or even satisfactory options for those of us gathered here this morning. But they are suggestive that it's possible to define membership in a parish by gathering and sending. So my closing question is, why not? Why not parishes that ask everyone, everyone, to commit to a social ministry just like Mary Knoll or the missionaries of charity ask every one of their members? Why not divide every parish into teams of 12 and ask that team of 12 to commit themselves to at least one refugee family or one neglected patient at a nursing home or one at-risk child who needs tutoring and a little cloud of friends? Why not create a list of advocacy options and invite teams of 12 to make a commitment to Catholic Relief Services or Catholic Charities or St. Vincent de Paul or Respect Life and then that team of 12 become the catalyst and the organizers of parish activity for that particular organization? Why not teams of 12, small faith communities if you will, that pray together, study together, and reach out together? Why not organize 12 doctors in the parish into a local version of Doctors Without Borders? Why not a team of 12 sent by the parish to Haiti or Japan? Why not a team of 12 to start a community garden and provide produce to low-income families? Why not a team of 12 groomed for community organizing? Why not a team of 12 to work with at-risk moms? Why not a team of 12 plumbers to rehab the houses of low-income and at-risk family holy plumbers? Why not, why not half the parish budget for gathering and half the parish budget for sending? Why not half the parish staff for gathering and half the parish staff for sending? Why not half the parish buildings for gathering, like worship centers and classrooms, and half the parish buildings dedicated for sending, like hospitality houses and literacy centers? Why not half the parish energy for gathering and half the parish energy for sending? Now, I ask you, does this sound heretical or unfaithful? And yet, and yet it does represent both a dramatic and I would say lively version of what parish could look like, and a parish that I think our children and the world would be inspired by. I mean, my brothers and sisters, think about it. What does the church look like when every Catholic is connected to another human being who needs a hand or needs a home or needs hope? And I say nothing would draw people to the church, would draw people to faith, like a church that was always being sent to do heroic and sacrificing work. And so, yes. And so, yes, it's a dream. It seems like a long way off. But most things worth living for and praying for are. On the other hand, if there is one pastor in this room this morning who is willing to give this a try... I will offer the services of our office and staff free of charge to help you see it happen. In the meantime, in the time between now and then, there's one thing we can all do tomorrow, every one of us. Gather 12 people who want to be sent and get to work. Why not? Let us live now what we hope for in the future, both within the church and in the world. Organize the 12 around you, around the needs of the poor. Work for justice. Work for peace. Invite your pastor to be one of the 12. Inspire the parish. Pray together. Laugh together. Cry together. Why not? And give your lives away together and change the church by your good example, just like St. Francis of Assisi, who did exactly the same thing. Why not?
And finally, the even more important question than why not is why. And so I'll tell you at least one reason why. Six years ago, I was diagnosed with advanced cancer and given very poor odds of survival. At age 48, with a wife and three daughters not even out of high school, that was very hard news to hear. Of course, I always knew I would die. I just didn't think it would be at 48. And I did most of the things that people who face death for the first time do. And one of the things I did, I admit, was to consider what I wanted to do before I died. And I went through the usual list. Trip to Hawaii. <laughs> New truck. <laughs> hair transplant. <laughs> and what I realized at the end of the day was that I was already satisfied. Whether I lived five more days or 50 more years, I had already been filled up by the gift of faith my church had given me. Loving God, loving the world, being invited into the privilege of working on behalf of God, especially for those who suffer. And in my own partial, limited, and imperfect way, I was already graced and gift with the very best that the world has to offer. My sisters and brothers, Jesus invites us to abundant life. And paradoxically, we discover abundant life not by hoarding, not by grasping and owning, but by giving ourselves away. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, where is its life? A few years ago, I received a book that chronicled the lives of those around the world living in violence. And on the cover of the book was the picture of a young African girl, probably 10 years old, who was wearing a very sad smile where her arms used to be were healed over stumps. Her arms had been macheted off by some warlord. The God I know, the loving God I know, is a God who would gather us, gather us in prayer, gather us in study, gather us in community, gather us for Eucharist, and after we had been formed and made ready, that God would send us and we would want to be sent, and that God would send us to that little girl, and that God would form us in a way that we would not be satisfied until the world was a place where all little girls and all people could laugh and grow and be safe and know love. I believe that God wants a church gathered and sent. And for whatever time I have left, that's what I'm living for. If I were to say, who are called to be the people of God, you would say. Yeah. Who are called in faith to follow Jesus the Christ, you would say. Yeah. Who are sent in faith to be a light to the nations. Yeah. Who are sent to feed the hungry. Yeah. Who are sent to clothe the naked. Yeah. Who are sent to bring great healing love to the whole world who are sent to bring hope to little girls and all people in this suffering world, yeah. who are sent. Yeah. Go in peace to love and serve the only God worthy of our lives, and let the church say,
Thank you. Thank you very much, Jack, for that prophetic vision of what we are called to as church. You have gathered us here. You have formed us well. And now we have 40,000 people sent out to transform our communities, our parishes into that vision. Thank you very much for sharing that with us today.